Hi guys and welcome back to another video and today we're looking at the MDR again. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at the 100% cylinder that you can get to install this rifle. Now it's already, already installed in this because this is after I've done all the, the video bits I'm going to insert but that's a standard cylinder. You'll see it's, I think they, they call it a 75% so basically the 100% cylinder doesn't have these ports and can supply more air down the barrel. Now... I'm not um, <clears throat> going to think that it's going to boost the jewels without sort of messing with the spring because, you know, having to push more air down the cylinder through a small nozzle, you're going to need a bit more power behind your spring to push that air down at the same speed. So I'm going to do some testing. I've got a mag filled with twos, two fives, threes, four threes and four eights. And what we're going to do is a chrono test of the 75% cylinder first. And we're going to go from each mag and show what the dual output is on that weight of BB. Then I'm going to quickly swap the cylinder out and we're going to get a dual reading of the exact same spring stock rifle as it is out of the box. The only thing I've done is uh, machine the gear and shim the gearbox. Um, and I'll show you what I find. So we'll get straight to that straight away. It's not going to be a super exciting video, but for those interested in the 100% cylinder, these are the results that I recorded. Okay, we're getting started with this dual test. Um, in this test, I'll be using an 11.1 .1 LiPo battery, and I have five different BB weights to test before we switch over the cylinder. So the first will be a 0.2. This is going to be loud because I'm firing it right next to the phone. This is a 0.2 gram. Uh, throughout all the tests, I'll be firing it with no muzzle device on, so that's no flash hider, as you'll see, no suppressor. I haven't got the handguard on as well, just to, to show that as well. So we're starting with a 0 0.2. 324, 3.27, 3.26, 3.27, 3.28, 3.30, 3.29, 3.31, 3.28, and 322, so practically around a jewel there. I'm going to take the magazine out, I'm going to clear the barrel. So that was with a 0.2. The hop is not on as far as I'm aware. Um, again, this is just testing the gun as it's pulled out the box. Nothing's changed. Um, yes, I have shimmed the gearbox and uh, done the change to the bevel gear. But that's a given, so we're going to go to a 2.5 now. I'm going to turn it off and back on so it clears all the data. We're now switching to a 2.5. Here we go. 2.94. 2.94. Still at a dual. 298, 296, 299, 297, 300, that's the highest one we've had yet, 1.049 joules, 296, 295, and 296 again. I'm going to take the magazine out, clear the barrel just in case, we are clear. And now I'm going to reset the chrono and we're going to go to a 0.3. It'll only let me store three BB weights, so we'll have to change it after that. So we're on to a 0.3 now. 0.3 gram BB, nothing's changed in the rifle. 264, just under a joule. 268, still one joule. 268, 263, 265, 264, 262, 268, 264, and 264. So still, we're about a jewel, just under. Remove the magazine, clear the barrel. This shouldn't have a BB stuck in the barrel, but you know I'm just doing it for <laughs> for peace of mind's sake. 
So we're now going to change these values. So this is going to go to a 43 because that's the next BB weight I have available. And then after that, we're going to be doing a 0.48. I do have five somewhere, but I've no idea where they are. Okay, turn it off to reset it. I'm gonna try and keep all this in one take on both uh, tests, just to avoid all the naysayers out there, there's bound to be some. So 0.43 is going in. And here we go. Uh, 209, 0 0.8 joules. 210, 211, 211, 209, 208, 212, 0.9 joules. 209, 210. And 209. So again, a little bit lower, not horrendous, especially at the power that we're running at. Um, these BVs start to get expensive at uh, four threes and four eights. So any discarded ones that come out of the magazine, I'll be putting back in the bottles. And now we come to our final weight, which is a 0 0.48. So we're going to reset the chrono. So it clears all the data off. I'm gonna suck this magazine in. This is where it starts to get expensive, especially if you were running four eights uh, dual. And here we go. 182, we've dropped joules down to 0 0.74. They're gonna probably gonna struggle a little bit with these. 189, 189, 190. 0 0.8 joules, 190, stabilizing, 191. Uh, that was my fault there, I'm gonna redo that when I click the chrono. 182, 194, which is the highest one we've had I think at 0 0.84 joules. Just gonna do one more because I missed one. So around about 0 0.8 joules on a 4.8. Again, I think if you're running a joule, um, it, it, it's not gonna make sense running ammo that's that heavy. Um, the extra flight time that you're gonna have, I think you're gonna be sort of, running at a joule, I think you're gonna be running 0.3s or something thereabouts, so. Uh, we'll get the cylinder switched out to the full cylinder, the 100% cylinder, and then we'll record all these results again. Right guys, I'm back. So all I've done is I've swapped everything over to the new 100% cylinder. Nothing else has changed. Same barrel length, same spring. And let's get this thing started. I'm starting this off with 0.2 gram BBs. 311. 304, 311, 314. Again, I haven't fired it as well, so this could be, I have put a bit of lubricant in there because obviously you want that inside a dry cylinder. Um, so this could take a few shots to stabilize. 312, 306, 311, 307, 306. 309 because I'm not coming back to this BB way I'm just going to put some rounds through it 309 and we should hope to see the uh, FPS stabilize I'm going to put a burst of auto 309 should be an empty magazine so we're just under a joule on a point two. So we're gonna switch this now. We're gonna to go to a two five. Turn it off. Come back on, grab the magazine with the point two fives in. And we're gonna carry on the test. So here we go, point two five. 
282, 0.9 joules still, 283, 286, 287, 288, 290, 285, 289, 282, and 283. So same 0 0.93 joules ish um, again we'll, we'll keep firing it we'll empty the mag because we'll just we'll get an idea what the average is so we're getting a little bit higher as we went along there again this could just be getting the uh, the lubricant spread around the cylinder Let's go ahead and change this. I'm going to go to a 0.3 now. Turn it off to reset it. And back on. 0 0.3 gram BBs, 100% cylinder. This is probably where I'd see the dual output to be the highest throughout the BBs, but we'll see. 261 at 0 0.95 joules. 259. 260. 256, 260, 256, 258, 257, 257, and 257. So again, a bit more consistent. There's a few ups and downs, which like I said, fresh parts, fresh install, you know, I would usually tend to um, put a couple of mags through it just because you want everything to be settling in place but for the purpose of this video I want you guys to see exactly what I see so let's get rid of the uh, last point threes into its bag we're gonna go down to ammo we're gonna change these round again so we're gonna go to a point four three I'm going to set it up for a, a 0.48 as well, but first we're going to do a 4.3. So we'll reset the chrono. 0.43 gram BBs. And here we go. 2.08. 2.06. 2 2.10. 2.09. 209, 205, 209, 209, 208, 208. Seems like we're getting a bit more consistent here, so let's clear the barrel there. Let's get rid of these 0.43s into the bottle. Like I say, I won't be cutting this because I want it to remain a fair test I'll keep speaking to you as I'm doing this and now we're going to go with a 4.8 so let's go down to ammo 4.8 turn it off and back on 0.48 gram BBs same power let's go 1.95 192, 193, 196, 186, 195, 195, 194, 195, 197. Still about 0 0.86 joules. Save these BBs because they're not cheap by any means. So yeah, um, all the readouts seem pretty much the same. What I will say is that you'll notice that the, the first test on twos with the 75, is it a 75% cylinder? Correct me if I'm wrong down below. Um, you are going to see the point twos shifting at a higher speed because 
when the pistons pull back to the rear, um, you've got that bit of gap of air for the piston to, to, you know, to have that bit of initial speed, especially with a point two, which is what I think they were higher. Um, but apart from that, everything else seemed pretty similar. Um, obviously going by memory, cause I'm not memorizing all this, but you'll see it on the video. So we'll get back on the bench and I'll give you my final thoughts. So you'll see there, it's not too dissimilar. Um, you know, the FPS readout was a little bit higher on the twos with the 75, but the rest of it is kind of about the same. Now, why would the power or the dual readout be higher on a two with a 75 compared to the 100? The point twos are the easiest BB to shift down the barrel because they're so light. Um, and with the 75% cylinder, you're going to get a bit more sort of uh, speed with the piston just because you've got a port here. The piston starts moving at speed, then it makes a seal, and then obviously it moves the BB down the barrel. Uh, that's my theory anyway, and that's what I think is happening there. But for the most part, it's all the same. The only thing you're going to get is more air down the barrel. Now, do I, you know, recommend the 100% cylinder? Yes. Um, the only reason for that is what I would do is I would fit the 100% cylinder, and then I would get um, a spring, whether you need to go up or down to get the dual output that you need for the weight of BBs that you're using. Now, I plan on changing this rifle, so once I can get my hands on an MDR Micron handguard, I'm going to be chopping the barrel down to here and having the suppressor sit a little bit more back, um, so further back, sorry, and once I've done that, whether I set the rifle up, I'm going to keep the 100% cylinder, and then whether I'm using it as a DMR or a, you know, one jewel you know battle rifle um obviously i'll change the spring depending on what i want to do and what i want to do with this gun is i want to over volume the barrel so you've got a 420 millimeter barrel you know you're probably going to take off once the handguard once i can get myself uh grips on a handguard we're probably going to be taking off you know 100 120 mil so we're probably going to be going from a 420 mil barrel down to a 300 mil barrel um this is just how i run most of my rifles uh, barring obviously a few and the reason why a lot of the airy stuff that i have like the x class and the m45 they're over volume barrels you've got more air they're not you know uh ported cylinders you're using the full volume of air that's available to the, from the gearbox and then the m45 especially only has a barrel of about that long um it's over voluming and what that means is when i'm running you know a 0.3 through it i'm running it at one joule there's more air than what is needed of the barrel and you do get a lot of excess air now that would be a bad thing if i was running lighter weight bbs but with those rifles, they're set up in a way where I use heavier BBs. Um, and it's the reason why the M45 from Ares out the box, they're so loud. It's like all that excess air is just bursting out the barrel, obviously, when the round's fired. And the M45 is really loud. And it's for this reason that when you put a really good suppressor on an M45 um to mitigate all that extra sound that's coming out of the barrel, you can actually make them extremely quiet compared to how they come out of the box. Um, I could go down the rabbit hole with you today and discuss why um, why I run my rifles like that, uh, apart from the reasons I just told you, and, and why it works so well. Uh, but this would be you know, a two hour long video. Um, but from what I can see, from the FPS readout, obviously the, the dual difference isn't going to be here or there. It's going to be about the same, which it was. It's going to struggle with the, the four threes and the four eights because um, of the power that the guns run. It's below a, below a dual. So that's uh, going to be something that once I've got my barrels set, um, I'm going to be putting a nice inner barrel, we'll grade the hot rubber maybe, and then I'll start tweaking with the, the power, uh, the spring power. So that is the results I've recorded today with the MDR 100% cylinder. My voice is still in and out, as you'll have heard, so apologies to those that it annoys. But um, that's the 
the data that I have. Uh, of course, this isn't going to be the same for every rifle, but I thought I'd record the difference on camera if there was any, and then show it to you guys. So thanks for tuning in to another MDR video, and I'll see you in the next one.